Okay, so every complex number of the form a plus bi can be plotted in the complex plane, where along the real axis we go a units, and along the imaginary axis we go b units. So for example, the complex number z equals 2 plus 3i. We can plot that point in the complex plane by going two units in the real direction, and then up three units in the imaginary direction. That takes us right there. So that is the complex number 2 plus 3i. OK, now suppose we have the arbitrary complex number z equals a plus bi right here. I want to define r to be this length here. And I want to be th define theta to be this angle here. If we do that, we can form a right triangle. Using this triangle here, we see that cosine of theta is equal to a divided by r. And if we solve this for a by multiplying both sides by r, we find that a is equal to r times the cosine of theta. Similarly, we find that sine of theta is equal to b divided by r. If we solve this for b, we find that b is equal to r times the sine of theta. So using these two values for a and b, we can write that the complex number a plus bi, instead of a, we have r cosine of theta. Instead of b, we have r sine of theta. We can factor out an r and write this as r times cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta. This is the trig form of the complex number a plus bi. OK, the number r is called the modulus of the complex number. OK, and that is just the distance between the complex number and the origin. Theta is called the argument of the complex number. OK, and you can easily see from this diagram here that r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. And that tangent of theta is equal to b divided by a. OK, let's do an example. OK, so let's consider the complex number z equals 1 plus 2i and write the trigonometric form of it. So we know the trigonometric form is going to be r times cosine of theta plus i times sine of theta. We need to find r and we need to find theta. Remember that r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So it's the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is the square root of 5. Then we also know that theta is this angle here. So we know that tangent of theta is equal to b, which is 2, divided by a, which is 1. So to find this theta here, we're just going to do the inverse tangent of 2 divided by 1, which is the inverse tangent of 2, and we just plug that into our calculator. Then we find that that is about 63.43 degrees. Okay, So the modulus is the square root of 5, and the argument is about 63.43 degrees. So the, com the trigonometric form of this complex number is written as the square root of 5 times cosine of 63.43 plus i times the sine of 63.43 degrees. OK, why don't you repeat that example for the complex number 3 plus root 2 times i. OK, so first we find r. r is the square root of a squared plus b squared. And then we find tan and then we find theta. 
Okay, so here's theta. We know that tangent of theta is equal to b divided by a. Then to find theta, we just take the inverse tangent of root 2 over 3. If we plug that into the calculator, we get about 25.24 degrees. So this right here is the trigonometric form of the complex number 3 plus root 2i. Okay, so at this point you're probably wondering what the point of having a trigonometric form of a complex number is. Okay, and one of the reasons is for an important result called de Moivre's theorem. Okay, de Moivre's theorem says that the nth power of the complex number z is equal to r to the n times the quantity cosine of n theta plus i times sine of n theta. So the trig form that I just gave you allows us to get this, this theorem. Okay, this theorem is very useful in the following way. Suppose I want to square the complex number 1 plus 3i. What I have to do is multiply it by itself. If I want to cube 1 plus 3i, I have to foil this guy out. I have to multiply it by itself three different times. So you can see the higher this power is, the more cumbersome the process of raising the complex number to that power is. De Moivre's theorem simplifies that dramatically. Let's see an example. Okay, so let's evaluate 1 plus 3i raised to the fifth power. The first thing that we have to do is get the complex, or I'm sorry, we have to get the trigonometric form of the complex number 1 plus 3i. So we need r. r is the square root of 1 squared plus 3 squared, which is the square root of 10. And then we can look at the location of this 1 plus 3i, so over 1, up 3. So this is the angle theta we're looking for. Tangent of theta is equal to 3 divided by 1, which is 3. So theta is the inverse tangent of 3. And that is about 71. 0.57 degrees. Okay, now let's make use, make use of this. So 1 plus 3i raised to the fifth power is r raised to the nth power, so root 10 raised to the fifth power, times cosine of n times theta. So 5 times theta plus i times the sine of n theta, so 5 times 71.57. Okay, so now we just clean this up by, uh, by uh, figuring out all these values on our calculator. So we find that root 10 raised to the fifth power is about 316.23. The cosine of 5 times 71.57 is about 0.999, and the sine of 5 times 71.57 is about negative 0.0375. So now to put this complex number in standard form, we just distribute the 316.23. So we find that 1 plus 3i raised to the fifth power is about 315.91 minus 11.86i. Okay, if you want exact values, just store the inverse tangent of 3 and the fifth root of the square root, I'm sorry, the fifth power of the square root of 10 in your calculator when you do these steps. Okay, let me give you one to try. Okay, press pause while you work on this one. So you should have found that r is equal to 2 squared of 2, and theta is equal to 45 degrees. So now we just plug these values into de, into de Moivre's theorem. Okay, so we find that 2 plus 2i raised to the 8th power is 2 root 2 raised to the 8th power times cosine of 8 times 45 degrees plus i times sine of 8 times 45 degrees. 
and we just plug these values into our calculator. So we find that that's equal to 4096 times 1 plus i times 0. So if we distribute the 4096, we get 4096 times 1 plus 0. 1 plus 0 is just 1. So that means that 2 plus 2i raised to the eighth power is 4096.